tier lists. We usually tune to them to find out what's the best thing in a selected category. Best characters in a fighting game, best mm. tax evasion scheme. Most Among Us look alike chicken nugget, you name it. The gist of them is either getting accurate information or some laughs out of the absurdity of them. But what happens when a tier list is absolute sausage water? In my case, I hate misinformation. So I just mold and scream profanity in the air, oh. wishing to correct the person and making the list, which is exactly what I'm going to do now with Rage Gaming Video's tier list of best weapons in patch 1.09. Hope you're in for a ride. Here's the actual list in question. I first want to point out that this tier list is read from right to left and down to up, meaning that the weapon that's lowest and more to the right is the worst one in the list. I also want to point out that the thumbnail features a preview of the list, where the weapons are completely misplaced, and there's even one weapon that doesn't make it into the actual list. I genuinely can't tell if this was done out of incompetence or some sort of weird ass clickbait. But enough babbling, let's jump right into the juice here. Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome back to Elden Ring and a patch of 1.09 where things have changed a reasonable amount. Today we're going over my top picks overall. So as always we have S, A, B and C and if it even makes it onto the list, even if it's a C tier weapon, I still consider it one of the best picks in the game. Keep this last sentence in mind, if it's at least C tier to him, it's one of the best picks in the game. Better not forget anything, bro. I'm going to start with the Black Knife, which I think we can get through pretty quick. This is a top tier weapon due to the fact that I think it's the best applier of Destined Death. A quick ranged attack on the Ash of War that applies a 10% health debuff, damage over time, and a nice burst of damage overall in general. As a non-bleed dagger, it doesn't have the same burst as a bleed dagger, but that Destined Death effect is so good that it deserves to be here. Ah, uh, yes. The most telegraphed Ash of War of all time makes a less than average dagger. One of the best picks of the game. Never mind the fact that you can dodge it simply by running to the side and that there's a dead zone where you'll never land it. In PvP, there are better options than this little toy, like Synquidia or Reduvia, for instance. And for PvE, it's not too great either, since it deals holy damage, which we all know sucks dinosaur balls against most enemies in the late game. Synquidia, or again Reduvia, would be much better options for PvP. But I guess you could say that latency helps in landing the Destined Death debuff, so... There's that, I guess. <laughs> Another weapon that deserves to be here has just made it onto the list, the Great Club. This now has holy damage and holy scaling. So basically it just does more damage. It's Ash of War, the Golden Land, is actually a great trading machine in PVP and allows you for some range options even in the open world. Undeniably, the performance and AR of this weapon is good, but the downsides that keep it down in C is ultimately the fact that it's got holy damage. That falls off so hard in Elden Ring's current version where the end game bosses, they're so resistant to holy damage. Damage. Also, the moveset of this weapon is incredibly bland. It's just basically just a singular bonk, but it performs well, generally, and it's also a great PvP pick. This one is very funny to me, because he straight out mentions why this giant glowing butt plug is balls. Poor moveset, holy damage, which is more useless than a cardboard fridge for late game in PvE. You're stuck with Golden Land, which in reality is a shitty Ash of War. And then he just goes and vomits the phrases. But it performs well, generally, and it's also a great PvP pick. My guess is that he saw the script ended there and just improvised those final lines to justify the inclusion of the weapon in the tier list. Down to C then, this might surprise you, the Bolt of Grand Sex. Again, I think this is a really good weapon, that's why it's on the list, but contextually, I just think it's got nerfed pretty hard. Over the last patches, they've been really nerfing thrust damage. So thrusting weapon counter-attack damage, that's worse in PvP, and in this patch, they've even reduced the hitbox size for some attacks with the spear specifically. Not to forget all the poised changes affecting spears and spear types noticeably. So while it still does great damage and has good scaling and an awesome ash of war, it's been specifically nerfed as a type of weapon repeatedly and I think that's definitely taken some kind of effect. Oh yes, the thrust damage nerfs surely have taken some kind of effect. So much effect that he two shots <clears throat> people with them in his very own video. Super nerfed, am I right? Dual grand sacks are still top tier. The moveset is just too good. They're only second to pikes in range and the damage is still Still nuts. The Ash of War is not bad either. It may be a bit crappy in a 1v1, but they are dual spears, dude. Even this guy can win with those. Also, I like that they flex their clown school diploma by labeling it Bolt of Grand Sex in their video description. <laughs> 
the last C tier weapon that we're going to talk about, the Cross Naginata Spears. Now that there's been some noticeable nerfs to Seppuku on how much health it takes, and also bleed builds in general with White Mask and the Talisman associated, no longer giving you as much AR. Now it's just a really solid, say, keen weapon, and still works with a bleed build, but nowhere near as broken or dominant as it once was. Still a good pick, but yeah, just not that versatile and weakened where it was strong. What? Cross Naginatas are in C tier as the worst weapon of the list. I'll just say why. That's a whole stack of rotten bollocks. Dual Naginatas are broken. Huge damage. Fourth longest spears in the game. Best scaling for dexterity. Bleed build up. Pure physical damage for spear talisman counterattacks and brain dead easy to use, both for PvE and PvP. But to this guy, anything that comes after this will be better. Yikes. Next, though, we move up to B tier where we start with a nice. Knight Rider Glaive. They really increased the running attack speed and also improved this weapon's recovery time on various attacks. Combine that with an Ash of War that has good hyper armor, like Loretta's Slash here, and that could be an incredible combo. It's also just an S-scaling strength weapon, so a strength weapon with a unique moveset compared to, say, Bonking or Colossal Swords. And this works in many different builds and playstyles because of that. As far as Halberds go, it's a top-tier pick, but I also don't think it's crazy, broken, mega strong, so B feels fair. Of course, he places the best Halberd in the game in B tier. This monster has an S scaling in strength and it's the fourth longest halberd. We also all know how strong the clean rot plus halberd combo is too. And there are better ashes of war than Loretta's slash for halberds such as, uh, I don't know, fucking flaming strike maybe? Also, it deals extra damage while on horseback, so another PvE bonus he's not mentioning and you don't even have to painfully pay attention to halberd damages while on horseback. I just read it in the goddamn wiki. A weapon that's feeling really good this patch is the curved greatsword Morgoth's Cursed Blade. That is because it's also a curved greatsword. In this patch, they've increased the speed, the range of these attacks, and recovery time of some attacks as well. And that allows for some incredible combos like this one, where you're doing a light attack or a running attack using the Ash of War, which comes out so quick now, and gap closes. And you can do the damn same thing, of course, in PvE, where you're dealing with a boss and just spamming the Ash of War or doing that sick combo I just mentioned. Curved great swords nowadays are in a peculiar spot. They're like the lowest tier of the meta, you could say. And they're also all right in PvE. I would not say that this one in particular is the best one, but it certainly isn't bad. Even a broken clock can be right twice a day, huh? Well, you could say that if it wasn't for the weapons he placed above and below it. So he's still being a misinforming goober. Another weapon massively changed over time is, of course, Rivers of Blood. which I still think is, you know, strong overall. It's just it's been destroyed in terms of its power. I still think this is a great PvE pick because, you know, there's no mind games. You just press against the enemy. As long as you're hitting with the sword and the Ash of War, it still does good damage, still does good bleed build up. But at the same time, again, bleed builds have been nerfed. White Mask and the Talisman, they no longer give you as much AR when they pop. But I still think it's a great pick and it has great power behind it, especially with builds that, say, work it into it rather than rely upon it. What? He just said a whole lot of nothing. He gave you a nothing burger and you just ate it all and even licked the plate. Literally every weapon he mentioned up to now is better than Rivers of Blood. And a lot of the ones that he won't mention are also better too. I'm literally fucking molding right now. Also in B tier, basically because of how it performs in PvE versus PvP, is the Mariah's Executioner Sword. This is a PvE focused machine where you're corkscrewing away health bars in milliseconds. In PvP, you can't make it work. You know, this weapon type, the Great Sword, has been improved. It just doesn't hit mega hard unless you hit with the corkscrew Ash of War, which is unlikely to get the full thing off. Still it can work and is fun when it does. The Ash of War is indeed all right for PvE. For PvP, there are much better options, and the Ash of War is pretty bad too. Not much more to say, to be honest. Again, better options to choose from, even some weapons that were left out of the tier list. Lastly, in B tier then, Moog's Spear, another thrusting great spear type which has been nerfed. It's still very strong, dealing good damage, feeling great. The Ash of War still has great range. What it does, it does really well. It's just they've consistently reduced the power of this weapon type and this bleed type in specific. Used to be an A, now it's a B, basically. Moog's Spear. 
Uh, sorry, I mean, Moog Spear is a great spear that inflicts bleed, dude. It's as good as it can get. It melts PvE with the Neil Ash of War, and when you dual wield it, it's an absolute cancer in PvP. What I find funny, though, is that for both Naginatas and Grand Sax, he actually showed footage of power stanced attacks, but he didn't show them with this one. He didn't showcase the absolute tumor that is the power stanced crouch attack. I guess that having to press two buttons instead of one is already too much for him, huh? Next though, we have A tier, where I'm gonna put the scavenger curved swords safely in up from a B from last time. That's because they've improved this patch. For some reason, this weapon type, the curved swords, well, they've improved the running attack speed, the recovery time on that, and the first attack of the weapon overall is quicker too. I don't really know. I thought these were pretty damn good, but to improve its base moveset, well, it's become really scary to deal with as a weapon type. Whether you're doing jump attacks, which were nerfed slightly, but still good, or whether you're doing a bleed build or any status build this is going to be a great pick curved swords are not too hot right now i mean you could say that for pve they're all right and it would be great if you showcased this with some boss that is not the first one in the fucking game but for pvp they're nothing special power stanced straight swords are always better mm. much like another curved sword going into a tier the wing of estelle again it receives the same curved sword benefits so it's great with power stance running attacks and so on it's not relying upon status so it's a great option and as an int weapon it's top tier you have that unique heavy attack which without costing any fp does magic damage at medium range which is incredible the ash of war is a really high dps spammer in pve and a great utility tool in pvp this thing is versatile it's effective it's one of the best int weapons and it's a tier because I just don't think it's broken. I just think it's fantastic. It's not relying upon status, so it's a great option. Huh? A great option for what? For shoving it up your ass and pretend you're a Christmas tree light? What does he even mean by that? That it's better because it doesn't have natural status effects, build-ups? That's just a moronic statement. Anything is better with an additional status build-up. It's a mediocre weapon at best, and the ranged R2 does not compensate for its lack of range and damage. You're also stuck with the Nebula Ash of War, which is not bad, but it's not too great either. And this is supposed to be an A-tier weapon, Jesus Christ. Also, Wing of Estelle. <laughs> Just like Moonvale, also in A tier. As a katana type, this was buffed to have increased running attack speed and reduced the recovery time of that, which is nice. But the main aspect of this is obviously the Ash of War, the heavy specific version of that. It's still super good and a PvP slayer, but it's also not as crazy as it once was and not really PvE machine monster anymore. It's reliable and it's a great source of magic damage and I still strongly recommend it and I still see it all the time. But it's just never really going to compare to what it once was, which was arguably the best weapon in the game during the original launch of the game. Correction, it's not a PvP slayer, it's a ganking tool. Moonvale on its own is not so good, not for PvP, and it's not as great anymore for PvE either. You said it yourself. So what in God's name makes this weeb trash an A-tier weapon? Yet some Somehow, this is still better than all the previous weapons and the ones he will not mention. Reddit brain at its finest. Next up, we have Nagakiba in the A tier, which I think is a universal top tier dex weapon. I was going to put this in S tier, but honestly, I think a lot of the builds revolve around bleed due to the blood flame blade buff that has been nerfed and fixed in this patch where you can no longer use that to buff your weapon and then use ranged ashes of war to deal bleed damage. That's been removed. There are so many ways to work this weapon. And again, katanas have been improved. It's a long heavy hitting dex weapon so it's absolutely fantastic still it's just without the craziness of the blood flame as much works more as a foundation to build something awesome on than it being inherently broken itself still it's a top tier pick and that's why it is an a tier and it's universally great with so many builds nagakiba is good yes sorry i meant Nagakibo, but he didn't portray the actual good things of it. It's actually good because of its insane range and the fact that Spinning Slash works wonder of it, which he didn't even mention. He was too busy bullying the fucking grafted Scion, the first enemy in the game. Next fucking video he'll be saying how broken some weapons are while facing the Soldier of Godric and the fucking tutorial boss. Finally for A tier we have the Bloodhound's Fang, which is pretty much the best early game weapon that you can get at the very beginning of the game in South Limgrave and the Ash of War hits like a truck. Even just the first part, let alone the follow-up dash forward, is so good and comes out so quick. Just like Morgoth's then, this is a curved greatsword where they've increased the speed, range, and recovery time for various attacks. Main thing, whether it's PvE or PvP, you can rejoice because it's even better than it once was. It's a curved greatsword, bro. 
It's decent in PvP for its moveset, poise damage and priority it gives. Not because of the ash of war, not because of dual wielding, not because of scaling properties. And it's certainly not better than some of the weapons already mentioned, nor the ones that he will not mention. Yes, I will keep saying that. Finally though, we come to the S tier, where we'll be quick, because you can see these weapons, you know what's coming. First up, the Blast from a Blade, arguably the best weapon overall. It's got all of the benefits of fire damage, of lifesteal on hit, of healing on kill, of an incredible ash of wall with long range, which is wide, which knocks people down, which deals really good damage, which is just an incredible weapon that works in so many builds. It's overtuned and overfilled with passive benefits, and all it's really done since 1.0 is get better with minor improvements to the weapon type and this weapon as a whole. The best weapon in the game, Maidens and Tarnished. With all the benefits of the fire damage, such as being mitigated by leveling Vigor, the one stat mandatory to level in PvP. Isn't that amazing? The Ash of War is alright in PvE, I guess, but again, there are way better options. Why this is supposed to be the best weapon in the game, I don't know. Some Reddit mental gymnastics, I guess. Also in S tier still is Reduvia. As I mentioned, it's a dagger with those massive buffs in 1.8. And for some reason in 1.9, daggers were left alone where claws and fists were adjusted. Daggers were the best in my opinion, and they are certainly still the best now. As a bleed build-up weapon, you're going to destroy with DPS and burst. Even if that slightly reduced this patch with the white mask and the talisman, it's still ridiculously good. The Ash of War was buffed last patch to have damage detection on the blade itself. So if you use it up close, it's like a shotgun burst. So whether you're using the power stance weapon, and moveset, whether you're relying on the Ash or mixing it up with both, it's going to be a top tier pick in PvE and PvP. To him, Reduvia is... sorry, sorry. Reduvia is better than all the previously mentioned weapons, such as the Naginatas, the Curved Greatswords, Nagakiba, etc. Come at me with those little tampons while I have pikes equipped and see if you can get close. I challenge you. For PvE, they're all right, I guess, unless you're facing enemies that are immune to bleed and resistant to slash damage. Whoops! But hey, second best weapon in the game, everyone! Next then is the Dark Moon Greatsword, which is pretty much the heaviest hitting ranged option without actually requiring FP. You just buff up, that costs FP, and then from there on it's stamina. You can fully charge it and there's so many ways to enhance that damage, leading to 5 or 6k hit damage a hit in PvE with the full charge. In PvP, it works incredibly as a mind game machine, because you can just tap it to send out a quick arc wave, or charge it and catch someone panic rolling. Either way, it'll hit like a truck, and this weapon type, the Greatsword, just gets better and better every patch for some reason. I absolutely love this weapon and it's still S tier. My gift to you, my Dorito-scented consort, is the third best weapon in the game according to this Gorgonite. And what makes it better? A telegraphed charge attack. Yup, that's it. It has the bad greatsword moveset, not the good one like Knight's greatsword. <laughs> Deals mixed damage cannot be infused with good ashes of war. It's amazing, isn't it? For PV, it's all right. For PVP, again, better options. Next up, we have the Great Sword. Much like the Naga Keeper, it's kind of a universal weapon, but instead for strength. Colossal Swords have had massive improvements to the poise that they're dealing. The Crouch Poke, which was the strongest part of it, was over nerfed and then buffed, so it's in a really good place again. The damage it can deal is wonderful. And again, it's a universal weapon. You can use so many different ashes of war. You can buff it in so many different ways. It works in so so many different strength-based builds. With good range, great damage, big poise damage, it remains an incredible pick for whatever type of playstyle you're looking for. I like how he mentions that the great sword is good because you can infuse it with many ashes of war. But then again, the three best weapons of the list can't be infused with ashes of war and somehow for him they are better despite that not being the case. The great sword is all right, not the best at anything. Not the worst either. Certainly not an S tier weapon, but surely an S tier original cosplay tool. Original. Last but not least then for S tier, we still have the Giant's Crusher. I found this even more reliable these days for whatever reason. A colossal weapon, it's just got big damage and big stagger. It's a trading machine in PvP with high poise builds. When it comes to PvE, it has a unique attack where you do the front flip slam and that does ridiculous damage. It remains the weapon that deals the most damage in one hit and you can easily work simple builds in to deal 5-6k damage a hit while being very tanky and resistant with high poise yourself. It works in PvP very well as long as you're using it to trade it does have a bit of a bland moveset but with what it's trying to do it does it the best out of any weapon <laughs> you serious as long as you use it only for pv it's not bad for pvp well
And there you have it, tarnished. The best weapons in the game. Which one are you going to put inside your urethra first? Jokes aside, it's pretty clear how misinformed he is about the whole ordeal. We could argue that for PvE, it doesn't really matter that much, and we can let it slide. But for PvP, the whole list is a complete mess. This guy clearly doesn't play much PvP, and the people that he fought against don't play much either. In order to make an accurate tier list, you need to test the weapons against matchups that are played in the most efficient way. This way, you get to test the pros and cons of every weapon, also their limits, and make a proper comparisons between all of them. He also forgot to mention some of the actual best weapons in the game, such as Clean Rot Knight Sword, Lance, Pike, Star Fists, Noble Slender Sword, and plenty more. As I said, I hate misinformation, and people are going to take this tier list to heart and try some of these weapons in PvP and either curse the game due to failing and spread shit about the game or win and spread misinformation about it. They have a big audience too, and that audience will keep spreading misinformation about the game over the internet, as if Elden Ring's community wasn't infested with it already. I know it sounds like the delusions of a madman and that it's not a big deal, but I don't care. And that's going to be it for now. Don't forget forget to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed, or else the Rage Gaming Videos guy will tear your list at 3 in the morning.